Lake Powell may reach dangerously low levels and the dam could even stop producing power just within the next 18 months. What happened is we had a terrible winter. Uh, and in other words, we didn't get enough snow. 2015 and 2024, it's three times the rate of losses in the first decade. 26 feet, that's all that stands between the American Southwest and a catastrophe that would fundamentally alter life for 40 million people. Right now, as you watch this, Lake Powell sits just 26 vertical feet above a threshold engineers call dead pool, the point where one of America's most critical dams stops generating electricity forever. This isn't some distant threat. The countdown has already begun, and the numbers are getting worse every single day. Glen Canyon Dam towers 710 feet above the Colorado River, a concrete giant that took 17 years to fill when it was completed in 1963. Engineers calculated everything perfectly, or so they thought. The reservoir would store enough water to power seven states, irrigate millions of acres of farmland, and sustain cities built in the middle of deserts. For decades, it worked exactly as designed. But something changed around the year 2000. The lake that took nearly two decades to fill started emptying at a rate nobody anticipated. What should have been a multi-generational transition is happening within a single human lifetime. The bathtub rings on the canyon walls tell the story. White mineral deposits left behind as the water receded, now visible from space, climbing 150 feet up the red sandstone cliffs. Every morning, technicians at the Bureau of Reclamation take measurements. They record the lake's elevation down to the inch, transmitting data to monitoring stations across the southwest. Water managers check these numbers with the obsession of stock traders watching market crashes. Current elevation, 3,578 feet above sea level. Dead pool elevation, 3,552 feet. The gap between those two numbers represents the thin margin keeping the lights on for millions of Americans. The Colorado River system was supposed to be foolproof. In 1922, politicians and engineers divided the water with military precision. Upper Basin states, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, and New Mexico received 7.5 million acre feet annually. Lower Basin states, Arizona, Nevada, and California got the same amount. Mexico was promised 1.5 million acre feet. Every drop was allocated, every promise carved in legal stone. Lake Powell sat at the heart of this grand bargain. When full, it held 24.3 million acre feet of water, enough to submerge the entire state of Connecticut under 12 feet of water. Its eight massive generators could produce 1,320 megawatts of hydroelectric power, serving 5.8 million customers with cheap, clean electricity. The system flexed but held through droughts in the 1950s and early 2000s. Dry years followed wet years in predictable cycles. Scientists monitored snowpack in the Rocky Mountains using automated sensors. They tracked reservoir levels with GPS precision. They built sophisticated models accounting for temperature, precipitation, evaporation, and human consumption. The numbers fluctuated within expected ranges. The promises held. Then the 21st century arrived, and the mathematics began to break. Since 2000, Lake Powell has lost 150 vertical feet of elevation. Marinas that once floated on deep blue water now sit stranded on cracked earth, miles from the shoreline. Boat ramps end abruptly in mudflats. Entire canyons drowned in the 1960s have re-emerged, exposing rock formations that haven't seen sunlight in 60 years. Ancient beaches, construction artifacts, even old equipment from the dam building era lie scattered across the newly exposed lake bed. The numbers tell a story of accelerating collapse. Long-term average inflow to Lake Powell should be about 12.4 million acre feet per year. In 2021, it was 3.2 million acre feet, the lowest in 126 years of record keeping. Not just below average, not just drought conditions, the absolute lowest ever measured. In 2022, it improved slightly to 6.7 million acre feet, still barely half of what the system needs to maintain equilibrium. Every six months, the Bureau of Reclamation releases updated projections. Every six months, those projections get worse. Even their wet scenarios show continued decline.
The average scenarios predict Deadpool within a decade. The dry scenarios show total collapse within five years. What was once considered a theoretical worst-case scenario for the late 21st century could happen by 2027. Scientists scrambled to verify these impossible numbers. They cross-referenced surface measurements with acoustic depth readings. They deployed sonar to map the reservoir floor. They compared satellite data with physical surveys. They audited decades of historical records searching for calibration errors or systematic mistakes. Every verification confirmed the same terrifying conclusion. This is real, and it's happening faster than anyone predicted. Researchers drilled into ancient trees, analyzing growth rings that preserve a ton 200-year record of water availability in the Colorado River Basin. Wide rings mark wet years, narrow rings reveal droughts. What they discovered sent shockwaves through the scientific community. The current drought ranks among the worst mega droughts of the past millennium. Only two other periods in the late 1100s and late 1500s showed comparable sustained low flows. But those ancient droughts occurred when the region supported a tiny fraction of today's population and, crucially, when temperatures weren't amplified by climate change. The Southwest has warmed nearly 3 degrees Fahrenheit above pre-industrial levels. This seemingly small increase drives devastating changes. Snow in the Rockies produces less runoff because more evaporates before reaching rivers. Soil stays warmer, air stays drier, plants consume more water. Every link in the chain from snowfall to river flow has been fundamentally altered. The human consequences multiply with each foot the water drops. Glen Canyon Dam's power output declines proportionally with water levels. The Western Area Power Administration has already cut electricity allocations by 25 percent. Every lost megawatt must be replaced by firing up natural gas plants, driving up both costs and carbon emissions. The cheap, clean hydropower that anchored the Southwest's energy grid for 60 years is vanishing. Beyond electricity lies an even deeper crisis. The Colorado River irrigates 5.5 million acres of farmland, about 15 percent of American agricultural production by value. Winter vegetables, cattle feed, cotton, specialty crops grown in Arizona and California's Imperial Valley all depend on this water. As Lake Powell drops, mandatory cuts cascade through the system. Farmers face brutal choices, which fields to water, which to abandon. Cities built on century-old water promises confront impossible mathematics. Las Vegas draws 90% of its water from Lake Mead, which depends on releases from Lake Powell. Phoenix, Tucson, San Diego all grew exponentially based on guaranteed water allocations that no longer exist. These aren't abstract policy discussions anymore. They're questions about whether millions of people can continue living where they are. The recreation economy has already collapsed. Lake Powell once generated over $500 million annually in tourism revenue. Houseboating, fishing, water skiing, an entire industry built around a vast blue oasis in Red Rock Country. Now marinas sit empty, businesses shutter, and the town of Page, Arizona, built specifically to house dam construction workers and later sustained by tourism, watches its economic foundation evaporate. Native American tribes with water rights dating back centuries face existential threats. The Navajo Nation, despite holding some of the oldest legal claims to Colorado River water, never received its full allocation. Now even those limited rights hang in jeopardy as the entire system fails. Treaty obligations to Mexico, already strained, become impossible when there simply isn't enough water for anyone. Insurance companies run scenarios with no historical precedent. Property values across the Southwest assume water availability. What happens to Phoenix real estate when water becomes genuinely scarce? What happens to agricultural land values when irrigation allocations get slashed? The quiet spiral accelerates. Less water means higher costs, economic disruption, population stress, political conflict, legal battles over treaties written when the river ran full. Governments and agencies launched ambitious responses. The Bureau of Reclamation's 500-plus plan aimed to keep Lake Powell above the critical 3,525-foot elevation through conservation, reservoir management, and operational changes. They restricted releases to Lake Mead, holding more water in Powell to protect power generation. 
They negotiated agreements with upper basin states to leave water in the reservoir rather than use full allocations. Congress allocated $4 billion for drought mitigation through the Inflation Reduction Act. Programs paid farmers to fallow fields, cities to reduce consumption, utilities to invest in water recycling. Las Vegas built a $1.5 billion third straw, a deeper intake tunnel that could draw water from Lake Mead even at unprecedented low levels. Phoenix expanded groundwater pumping. Tucson accelerated desalination research. Initial results sparked cautious optimism. Conservation measures showed promise. In 2023, aggressive cuts combined with fortunate snowpack led to slight gains in reservoir levels. Water managers spoke carefully about stabilization. But every solution revealed new problems. Holding water in Lake Powell meant releasing less to Lake Mead, which faces its own deadpool threshold at Hoover Dam. Protecting one reservoir accelerates crisis in another, an impossible optimization problem with no good answers. Paying farmers to leave fields fallow worked until permanent farmland retirement began. Rural communities built around agriculture started collapsing. Cities building deeper intake tunnels discovered they were merely buying time. You cannot engineer your way out of a systemic water deficit when the fundamental hydrology has shifted. Political fractures widened. Upper Basin states questioned why they should sacrifice their legal water rights to benefit Lower Basin cities that overbuilt based on false assumptions. The 1922 Colorado River Compact, once sacred, became a source of bitter conflict. Who decides what equitable sharing means when there isn't enough for anyone? Scientists made another disturbing discovery. Sediment accumulation was reducing Lake Powell's capacity even as water levels dropped. The reservoir could theoretically refill to its old elevation, but would store significantly less water than before. Every proposed solution revealed another dimension of the crisis, another way the system was breaking beyond repair. The language of officials shifted subtly but significantly. They stopped talking about recovery and started discussing adaptation. Then adaptation gave way to managed decline and damage mitigation. The question was no longer how to restore Lake Powell to historical norms, but how to manage the transition to something entirely different, a future where the assumptions that built the modern Southwest no longer apply. 26 feet represents more than a technical threshold where turbines stop spinning. It's the distance between the infrastructure that made the Southwest possible and the climate reality that may make it impossible. It's a measurement of the gap between promises made a century ago when the Colorado River ran full and the harsh mathematics of today. Lake Powell sits at the intersection of competing truths, the water that flows from Rocky Mountain snowmelt, the water that evaporates under desert sun, the water promised to farmers and cities and tribes, the water that powers the grid. The equation no longer balances. Outflow exceeds inflow year after year. The reservoir that symbolized humanity's conquest of the desert has become a monument to limits we can measure but cannot escape. Every day the elevation drops. Every day water managers make impossible choices about who gets water and who doesn't. Every day the gap between the Colorado River Compact's promises and hydrological reality grows wider. The question isn't whether Lake Powell will reach Deadpool anymore. It's what happens to 40 million people when it does. Will it be a managed transition to a new reality or a cascading failure that reshapes the entire region? 26 feet, a distance you could walk in seconds. A distance that separates the American Southwest from a reckoning that will fundamentally transform how we live in the desert. The water continues to drop, the mathematics continue their relentless logic, and somewhere in those bureau offices, technicians record today's elevation, knowing tomorrow's will be lower. The countdown that began in 2000 accelerates toward its inevitable conclusion. What was built over generations unravels in decades. What was promised when water seemed infinite confronts the reality of permanent scarcity. And 40 million people wait to discover what comes next when the lights go out and the turbines fall silent. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.